I can't tell you how many times I've been asked to paint a horse. So guess what? Today we're gonna go on a wild ride and I'll show you how to paint a horse head. So taking your mop brush, I took some blue at the top of my canvas with some back and forth strokes, blending in some white towards the middle of the canvas. And then without washing my brush, take a little bit of white, and I mean just a little, while the paint is still wet. And while I'm slightly tilting the handle towards me, I'm doing very light little circular bouncing motions. This is gonna make your cloud look fluffy. You can do back and forth strokes to blend in anywhere you need to, but build onto your sky just doing clouds in different areas. Make them all different shapes. You don't want a perfectly round cloud. You can have some with just little hints of white. Uh, build it up however you want, but we're gonna give our horse head a nice background. I went to go see a stable and when I was taking pictures of the horses, they had a dirt ground where the horse was. So I'm taking a clean mop brush now with some tan and white, doing back and forth strokes underneath the sky. And underneath where the horses were, there was a lot of hay. So I'm blending in a little bit of dark yellow at the bottom as well. There we go. Now clean off your mop brush again and take some black paint. We're going to paint some trees in the distance. So right where the sky meets the ground, do a black line and without washing it then, take a little bit of the tan and blend it while it's still wet at the bottom. You can blend it down a little bit further, even adding a little bit of white and yellow. There, that gives it some distance. And then grab a fine artist sponge. We're going to paint some trees in the distance on top of that black line. So with some dark green, some light green, and a little bit of light brown, I'm just bouncing the sponge. You don't want too much paint on your sponge, but bounce all different heights and areas. I'm gonna build it up on the left side a little bit more. I did go all the way across with my trees, but don't worry too much about the right side because that's where the horse head is going to be. Make sure they're all different heights and then grab a round brush. You can take some of that black and blend in the funny bottoms of your trees into the distance. Now taking a detail brush, I'm going to do a tree on the left hand side. This one's gonna be a little bit more uniform. So I'm just taking some dark brown, a little bit of black, Design your branches however you want, but again, notice there are some Vs. The branches are reaching up and they're all kind of zigzaggy, not perfectly straight lines. And then grab a regular artist sponge. This has a little bit of a larger texture because the tree is closer to us. I'm just lightly bouncing some of the darker green and a little bit of light green over top of the branches. So don't design them too much. You can add some highlighting and shading on the tree as well. All right, let's start the horse head. So I'm gonna show you how to get the basic horse head shape and grab the colors that you want to use for any specific horse that you're modeling it after. The horse that I'm gonna do is was a beautiful reddish orange tone. So these are the colors I'm using. Taking my round brush, I'm going to do a large circle up in my tree line. That's gonna be the top of the head, leaving enough space for the ears at the top. And then do a smaller circle further down into the left of that big circle. Sticking with the curves of the circles, I'm going to do a line at the bottom connecting the two and another line at the top connecting them as well. Notice how both of these connecting lines also curve in just a little bit towards the center of the head there. Then I'm sticking to the top head curve and do a line going down off the picture and then a line going down for his neck and the front side of him as well. There we go. And also just to get a little bit more of a shaped nose, see I'm gonna do a little point here on the left hand side of this circle. I'm also going to flatten the bottom of this little circle. It's slightly tilted down to the right and then straighten up the bottom there. And at the bottom curve of this larger circle, I'm going to do a slight point as well. That's gonna be his brow bone area. That's the basic shape of a horse. Take your colors and fill it in. Now this is just the first coat. See how it's a little transparent? Don't fret over that. Just fill it in as your base coat. Think of it like you're underpainting. We also have to do a first layer for his ears. So grab a smaller round brush and do a teardrop shape at the top right hand of his head. See how the curve at the bottom goes into the head a little bit and the point is tilted to the left a little bit. And then on the other side, we're gonna do another teardrop shape that's pointed towards the right, but the bottom curve doesn't go into his head. It's actually behind his head a little bit. So I'm just gonna cut the bottom of it off and just finish that circle. I'm also gonna take a little bit more paint on the right-hand side of the ears and connect them to the head a little bit more. Dry it and you have your horse shape. 
Now take a detailed brush and grab some black paint. We're gonna do a first coat of his features, including his eyes and nostrils and ears. So for the eye, I'm gonna do a slight almond shape. See how it's pointed up towards the right and down a little bit on the left-hand side. It's lined up right underneath that jut out on the left-hand side. So see, I'm gonna add a little bit of an eye peeking out on the left there, but we're gonna focus on this right eye more. Same thing with the nostril. You can really define this front nostril here. So I'm doing almost like a large comma shape and then fill it in. Their nostrils can be really big. So go off of a reference picture if you have one because horses are all so different. But do something like that and maybe a little bit of the left side is peeking in here. And same thing with the ears. We're just gonna do a base layer of the inside of his ear, so a smaller teardrop shape. And same thing on the left, just make sure you're leaving a little outline of the brown around each of them. There we go. Now we're going to start taking all of the colors, but I'm gonna add a little bit of black to it. And I'm just gonna play around with all of the different tones to get a first layer of highlighting and shading. So starting with the shading, I'm going to take only just a little bit of paint. See, I'm mixing the tone I want to have, but I'm not gonna scoop the paint up because I want this to be a thin layer, all thin layers of paint. Think about if the light was coming from down from the top left where the horse would have shading. So I'm thinking it's gonna be on the bottom right side of his head, right underneath his chin here. And again, this is just a first layer of shadings. Just looking to see where blocks of dark colors would be. Also going to do this on the snout as well. Some underneath the eye. Now see how I have a buildup of paint there? You don't want that. Do such a little bit of paint on your brush. See how I'm doing little circular motions with it? I'm not scrubbing it so hard that I'm messing up the bristles. You don't want the metal part of your brush to be touching the canvas. But you do very lightly want to do almost like a circular scrubbing motion, just blending in this color. Now, I got just the basic shading there. I'm also going to blend a little bit of a lighter toned color for some of the highlights where it would be. A horse's coat is very, very shiny. So there's gonna be a lot of highlighting and shading in here. I'm doing this again. I'm making sure there's no buildup of paint. It's a very, very thin layer today. And the, the highlights would be on the left-hand side, some on top of his eye, maybe make it a little bit darker at the top here. I feel like I'm contouring his face. If you're good at putting on makeup and contouring faces, this is a good painting for you. But I know his cheekbone had a little bit. And now I want you to see something. See how it's a crisp line in between the highlights and the shading? Well, one thing you can do with acrylic, especially if it's a thin coat, is see, I washed off my brush. Make sure it's not dripping, but with just the water on your brush, a very damp brush, you can go in and just lightly blend where the two colors meet, and it's going to soften that line. That's a trick you can do with acrylic craft paint. With regular artist acrylic, it might be a little bit easier, actually, but that's what I like to do. Now, the nose of this horse had a gray tone to it, so I'm taking a little bit of a reddish gray and shaping the front side of his nose here, a very light touch. Gonna do that all the way in the front, see how it curves up a little bit more on the right-hand side, and it's a slight curve on the front of his nose there. We're gonna fill that in. There'd be a little bit more shading on this right-hand side. Let's fix up his nostril and then make sure the highlight meets that. Again, you can wash off the brush, make sure it's just a very damp brush, not dripping, but you can blend in where the two meet. See that? Just little circular motions. I don't have any paint on my brush. It's just utilizing what's already there and when it's still wet, that's the best time to do it. Now don't spend too much time on the right side of him because his mane is going to be there, but I did do a second coat with a lighter shade. And then same thing with just a little bit of water, I'm doing a light circular motion over top where the two meets, and that's going to blend in the two colors just a little bit. There we go. Okay, a little bit more shading behind the ears. If you're going off of a reference photo, you can just kind of look at the picture and think, okay, where are their darker tones? And just add little, little blotches of color where they are. I'm even gonna do a second coat on the ears as well. You can even add some highlighting along those edges where the brown is. 
You have a little bit of perspective on this right hand side, so see how there's more brown on the right side than there is on the left of the ear. And then don't forget to take a detail brush and fix up, like the ears were a little curved at the top, you can fix up any fine points. I'm even going to take the detail brush for a little bit of shading behind the right side of this ear over here. Any smaller areas where there's shading, use your detail brush. Now that's the basics of a horse. Now you can add in a base layer of any defining features. Like this horse, I don't know if this has a specific name, but he had like a marking on the front of his nose that almost looked like a kite in between his eyes. So I'm going to add that in with some white paint. And even with some white paint, his nostrils had some white outlining them as well. I'm gonna blend that in. And hardly any paint on my brush, I'm going to do a light coat of white in different areas where his nose was shining. Now that you already have a first coat of highlighting and shading on your horse, you can go back in and add more defining highlighting and shading. And you can even do darker areas. The, the more dark and light you have, the more three-dimensional it's going to look. So I'm gonna make some of the shading here uh, where his nostrils would be casting a shadow. I'm gonna make that even darker, a darker shade. Now his snout does look a little funny too because we didn't add his jawbone. Just a little bit at, of the bottom of his mouth. This would be peeking out here. I'm using black paint. That's the bottom of his mouth. You can make it look like he's smiling. I added that in and then I'm gonna take my detail brush to define it with just a little bit of the light gray, a little bit more white. Define that curve at the bottom of his snout. See how it curves up just a little bit in between the nostrils. And where the mouth is at the corner, you can bring that out a little bit more too. Like that, see that little jut out? That's part of it as well. There we go. Now I'm gonna add even more darker defining tones. A horse's face is actually very muscular. They are strong animals. So I'm gonna add more reddish tones and darker shading in different areas make it a little bit more detailed. If you have a reference picture, look and see where that might be. I'm even gonna add a second coat of highlight with even brighter areas. This is a brightish, brighter reddish tannish color. And the lighter the coat you add, see I'm using the texture of the canvas to my advantage because I think brushing it on in such a light coat makes it look like it's shiny or shimmery as well. Uh, but you don't have to do it that bold. You can blend it in I'm gonna do a little bit on this right hand side too, but again, don't worry too much about how much detail's over here because the mane is going to go over top of it. But first, let's fix up the details on his eye. Taking a detail brush, I'm outlining it with some dark brown. Also going to take the color I want for the iris part and do a crescent shape, blend them in with more black. Unless you get way up close, their eyes are just very, very dark, but I do want it to have a little bit of color. Let's do a little bit of highlight outlining here, and don't forget little touches of white just to make it look like he's alive, the light is shining on his eye. Fix up a couple more shading around here, just defining the jawbone a little bit more. I'm also gonna step back and start fixing up different details, like this mark needs to be a little bit smaller, so I just added a little bit more shading around that to reshape it there. Now the face is pretty much how I want it, so I'm gonna take a round brush and we can start adding some hair. He's gonna start looking more like a horse now. I'm taking black first and I'm pulling lines curved over top of his forehead from in between his ears. I'm also going to start a little bit above the neckline and see how their curve to the right curves over and down, almost like the waterfall stroke, but we're doing different individual brush strokes of hair. You could keep them black, but I'm also gonna take some of the reddish tones and uh, just piece in different colors. You can add as many different colors to the mane as you want. The horse that I got to see in person, all of their manes were trimmed really short, like just a couple inches. So I'm making this up, but I think long flowing manes are so pretty on horses, so we can't leave that out. Don't forget to step back and look at your painting from far away. Now I am just fixing up some edges, like I felt like I needed to straighten out his snout a little bit, and I feel like the jut out on his left hand side comes out a little bit too far, so strategically I put it in the tree line, so I added some texture over top of that. 
and I'm just fixing that up to come in a little bit further so it's not sticking out as far. With acrylic, you can change anything you need to. I'm also gonna add a little bit more detail to the eyes, so make sure it's definitely highlighted. I'm gonna add a little bit more shading on the top, blend that in, and don't forget eyelashes. That's so important with a horse. Their eyes are so soulful. So look at pictures of horse eyes and really get some detailed. It's up to you how detailed you get, but I am taking just a little bit of this brighter tan reddish color and adding those in. Add a little bit of white on the top of them there to make it look like they're connected to the eye. Oh, so pretty. Let's even add in this iris part. Let's put a little bit of white, little tiny white ticks in there to look like the light is shining in those as well. Oh, I love it. Maybe on the left hand side, since I fixed that jut out, I'm gonna add a little bit more reddish tone, but let's add a part of his eye in that you can kind of see from the side the way it's turned. Don't forget a little bit of eyelashes there as well. While I have the white, I'm taking a round brush and adding some highlights to his mane. Don't forget to take a detail brush and fix up any rough edges. That You're doing all of your detail fine line work now. The more detail you put into it, the better. Fix up everything, even step away and come back to it after a while. That's what I do sometimes. Like this one, I got most of the way and I'm here a couple hours later, I'm coming back and adding more highlights there. And we don't want him to run away, so I'm going to add a fence in the background with my detail brush, just taking some tan and white, very thin line. I did add a little bit of water to this so it can be really, really small. There we go. And as a final step, you don't have to do this, but I wanna try it anyway. I'm taking a dish sponge, a little bit of that dark yellow on the dish sponge. I am scrubbing lightly in the bottom left-hand corner. I want this to look like the texture of hay because there's a lot of little fine lines for with hay in the picture I'm using, and I don't wanna paint those with a detail brush, so we're using a texture technique. Scrub a little bit of black in there, and then I'm doing circular motions with some of the tan, white, and yellow around there to blend in any rough edges. Ooh, that really was a wild ride. You can paint this as a beginner, I know you can. If you have a horse or a picture of horse that you wanna use, you could use this just as a guideline, but have fun with it, make it your own, and I would love to see how they turn out. Happy painting.